If you're joining us online, we welcome you also. If you are joining us online, please take a moment to check in, let us know you're here. And please know we do have Mark in the back responding to any questions you may have, um, just allowing us to continue to stay connected in person and through the blessings of technology. If you're visiting with us today, I wanna to extend a special welcome. If you have any questions, please feel free to see me after the service. And now a few other announcements as we get started. Please remember to check our church webpage and Facebook page for ongoing announcements and updates. And if you would like to support the ministries of our church, both here locally and as part of a larger denomination, we do have an online giving option at the top right-hand corner of our church webpage, an offering basket in the back where you picked up your bulletins. We appreciate all your generosity to help us continue to build God's kingdom here on earth, here and now. Also, I'd like to remind you to mark your calendars. Ash Wednesday is just around the corner. On February 22nd, we will once again be offering our drive-through imposition of ashes right out here outside of the canopy from 11.30 to 1 o'clock that day, and then again from 5 to 7. Myself and many others will be there. As you drive through, you can sit in the comfort of your warm car. We have a short liturgy and prayer that we share and then offer the ashes and the sign of the cross on your forehead. A reminder that as we enter into the season of Lent, that is a season of repentance, seeking God's forgiveness and preparing our hearts for Christ's resurrection on Easter morning. Again, February 22nd from 11.30 to 1 and 5 to 7. And if you're interested in helping with the imposition of ashes, we always need more hands, more helpers for that. So please see me after the service or send me an email in the coming week if you are available to help with that. Now, friends, may we lift our hearts and voices to worship our God. I invite you all, will you join me in an attitude of worship? Good morning. Will you please stand as you are able and join in the call to worship? We gather in the name of the living Christ to worship God. God's love is for you and for all people everywhere. 
The living Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Please remain standing to sing hymn number 200, Tell Out My Soul. be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 10. Be glad in the Lord always. Again, I say be glad. Let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your prayers and petitions along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. From now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent and if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things, all that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. Practice these things, whatever you learned, received, heard, or saw in us. The God of peace will be with you. I was very glad in the Lord because now, at last, you have shown concern for me again. Of course, you were always concerned, but had no way to show it. The word of the Lord for the people of God.
I'd like to invite our children to come forward as Miss Anna shares a message with us today. There aren't very many of us today, but I can see the ones that are here, good helpers. So I have a challenge for you, okay? Let's see how good you are at this game. We are going to talk about focus today, all right? So right now I need everybody to focus on the window. Oh, Brandon, window. Okay, focus on the floor. Josie, floor. Okay. All right, now, don't look at the window. <gasps> Alice, did you look at the window? No? She says no. Okay, good job. Now, is it harder to focus on one thing or is it, mm, let's say it a different way. Is it hard not to focus on the right things? Maybe sometimes. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that today. So I have a pillow for you. I have two pillows actually. I have this one and I have, you want the other one? This one. <laughs> Which one is more comfortable? Is that one squishier? Is it nicer? Here. Is this one, is this one soft? Is it squishier than the other one? No, pillow. No? Okay. Well, this pillow is meant to be comfortable. Both pillows are supposed to be comfortable. That's what they're for. That's what they're intended to do. This one is doing a much better job than this one. So let's open this one and see what makes pillows comfortable. What makes this pillow comfortable? What's in here? Henry, you popped it. Here's one. What do these say? Here you go. Ada, can you catch? Oh, no! If I can throw. Okay, what's it say? Goodness. Faithful. Faithful. This one says love and patience. Kindness, joy. What's your say, Ada? Can you shout it? Peace. Peace. And we've got gentleness there, too. What are these? These should be familiar. What made this pillow so comfortable? Fruits of the Spirit. Good job. I have another one. What's it say? Control. Self-control. Good. So we have all of these pillows. This is what made that pillow such a comfort. It's filled with the fruits of the Spirit. It's got all of these pieces that make it a comfort to everyone around them. This pillow, though, it did try. It did have something in it. What's in there? <laughs> Emptiness. <laughs> Emptiness. Hate. And that's a big word. Discontent, right? So both of them were trying. Their focus was on the wrong thing. If we are meant to be a comfort to this world, which we are. We are meant to be a comfort to this world. It is easy to focus on the wrong things. And then we turn into a pillow that is not a comfort to anyone. We turn into something that is not what we are intended to be. How do we get fruits of the Spirit? By being what? By doing what it says. But that's just focusing on the fruit. How does a tree get good fruit? By ta being taken care of. Now, what does a tree need? Water and sunlight. Water and sunlight. Like the water that keeps you from being thirsty. We talked about that, right? A tree that focuses on the water and the sun and just being is going to be a much comfier pillow. And it's not because it's trying to be a good pillow. It's not like it's trying to compare itself to other pillows. Why can't I be good enough? Why am I not as good as this person? Why am I not a good enough Christian? That's not what we're focusing on. If we are still and we focus on Christ, keep our eyes on Christ, he's the one who will fill us with the fruits of the Spirit. And that will make us the greatest comfort to this world. And that's what he calls us to be. Not better than someone else, not the best Christian, 
but just to focus on him to get all that joy. Which pillow do you think is happier? That pillow is definitely happier. Yeah, that's a good pillow. I like that pillow too. Well, the, yeah, the bunny is cute, but this is a better pillow for sure. Okay, so all I want to make sure you guys remember is don't let the world distract you. You don't have to try to be the best pillow. If you keep your eyes on Christ, if you focus on God and pray and spend time with him, he will fill you with what you need to meet your purpose because he wants you to be joyful. Will you pray with me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Don't let us be distracted with the world, but help us look to you to be loved. Amen. Our second scripture reading today is from Galatians 5, 22 through 6, 10. <clears throat> but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the self with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, Let's follow the Spirit. Let's not become arrogant, make each other angry, or be jealous of each other. Brothers and sisters, if a person is caught doing something wrong, you, who are spiritual, should restore someone like this with a spirit of gentleness. Watch out for yourselves so you won't be tempted too. Carry each other's burdens, and so you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are important when they aren't, they're fooling themselves. Each person should test their own work and be happy with doing a good job and not compare themselves with others. Each person will have to carry their own load. Those who are taught the word should share all good things with their teacher. Make no mistake, God is not mocked. A person will harvest what they plant. Those who plant only for their own benefit will harvest devastation from their selfishness. But those who plant for the benefit of the Spirit will harvest eternal life from the Spirit. Let's not get tired of doing good, because in time, we'll have a harvest if we don't give up. So then, let's work for the good of all whenever we have an opportunity, and especially for those in the household of faith. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Morning. So I've realized for five and a half years now, I have been carrying a mug up here with me. And recently, some of you have become curious about what is in this mug. Well, that depends on the day. Monday through Friday, it is filled with coffee. On Sundays, I hate to disappoint, it's just tea or so we'll say. <laughs> Not as exciting as you had hoped. But then I have to ask, if I'm carrying this mug around on a Sunday morning, and one of you bumps into me, what will happen? It's not a trick question. It'll spill, yes. Tea will spill out, that's right. But why? Why will tea spill out of that mug? <laughs> the physics answer. Uh, we don't have that much time, Luke. <laughs> well, it'll spill out because someone bumped into me, right? Well, actually, no. Tea will spill out of that cup because tea is what was in that cup. 
You see, whatever is in my cup is what will spill out. Today, as we consider what it means to hit the reset button once again in our spiritual lives, Paul, the author of this letter to the church in Galatia, is asking a very similar question. When life bumps into you, what will spill out? Because life will bump into you. And when it does, what will spill out? Two weeks ago, we considered our identity and how through baptism we take on a new identity through Christ and we truly become children of the living God. And then last week we explored our purpose in life and how important it is to always keep that God-given purpose in front of us. As Anna explained, if we don't, if we lose our focus on that purpose, we will find ourselves caught up by the noise of the world instead. And so today, I want to ask you this question. Do you look like Christ? The way you move and speak and live in this world, does your life reflect the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ. Now I know what you're thinking, way to make us all feel good this morning. But let me assure you, all of us have fallen short. All of us could use an opportunity today to hit that reset button when it comes to living more like Christ. So where and how do we even start? Well, the simple answer is we start with the Holy Spirit because that is precisely the purpose and the work of the Holy Spirit. Max Lucado writes, it helps to consider the Spirit's work like this. What Jesus did in Galilee is what the Holy Spirit does in us. Jesus dwelt among the people, and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. You see, God's Spirit is living and breathing in us. It's exactly what Paul was trying to explain to the early church. The very same love and mercy and compassion and grace that filled Jesus... God has placed those very same things in us as well. The fruit of the Spirit have been planted in your heart since the very beginning. Now whether those seeds have taken root, whether they have grown and begun to bear fruit, well maybe the only way to know that is to see what spills out when life bumps into you. Because the truth is, when life is hard, when we find ourselves filled with pain or grief, most of us are probably not overflowing with love and joy. We're probably not overflowing with peace and patience and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. But here's the good news. The fruit of the Spirit is meant to be cultivated over a lifetime, not overnight. And it also doesn't grow without the proper preparation. We cannot have a heart that is filled with anger and resentment or guilt or shame and expect our lives to produce different fruit. We don't plant apple seeds and expect to grow oranges. We don't plant anger and shame and expect to grow patience and peace. But when we turn to God, when we reset those values and seek forgiveness and accept God's grace, our hearts will find, will find them to be opened. God's grace 
washing us clean. And once again, there will be room for the Holy Spirit to take root and to produce good fruit. When we hit reset, when we clear away the burdens that have been weighing us down, we are allowing the fruit of the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts and to overflow from our lives into the lives of others. To embody, to live these traits, we know them as the fruit of the Spirit, and to live those, that's a tall order. In fact, I'm highly confident that I have never been all of those things at the same time. But I came across an explanation this past week that shined a new light on this passage. It explained that what seems to be a random list of good qualities can actually be divided into three categories. If you think about the first three fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace. Love, joy, and peace all are in the category of our relationship with God. And the next three, patience, kindness, goodness, those relate to our relationships with other people. Are we patient, kind, and good in our relationships with one another? And then faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, internal qualities that bring peace to our lives. But all of them put together, they become a tangible expression of a life that has been transformed by the grace of Jesus Christ. We must be careful, though. Paul did not teach that the fruit of the Spirit were precursors to faith or that they were even required to prove our faith. Paul says very clearly, faith alone, nothing added, subtracted, substituted. Only faith sets us right with God. But Paul is also very clear that our faith is alive. It's active. Translated from the Greek, faith activated through love. The New Interpreter's Bible commentary explains it like this. Hope is the future tense of faith. Love is the present tense of faith. How we love others isn't how we receive faith, but it is directly proportionate to our faith. Friends, our values, the things that fill us up from the inside always have a way of making their way out. Here's another way of thinking about it that came to me this week. I make a lot of crock pot meals. I like that I can just throw a bunch of stuff into a pot, turn it on low, and when I come home, there is magically a meal ready to go. However, I have also learned that crock pot meals go one of two ways in our household. Late in the afternoon, when we finally get home, I pick the girls up from school and I open that door into the house. The aroma of that crock pot meal comes rushing out. And like I said, one of two reactions. The girls say, yum, what's for dinner tonight? Or unfortunately, more times they say, ew. I'm not eating that. But the point is, good or bad, whatever is simmering on the inside will become known on the outside. So what about us? What does the world around us, what are those closest to us, what do they see in our lives? When life bumps into us or life knocks us down altogether, what spills out of our hearts? What fruit are we bearing? What values are we living? 
in our homes, our schools, our workplaces, in our world. Faith working through love. Do those around you see your faith through the values that you carry? Do they see your faith through the love that you show? Your family, your friends, your neighbors, might I even say your enemies? Have they seen the face of Christ? Have they experienced grace? Because they've walked through these doors or because they have stood in your presence. So maybe today we need to hit that reset button. Maybe today we need to give our hearts over to God once again and ask God to clear away the bitterness and the resentment. To ask God to make room for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And maybe today, through the sacrament of Holy Communion, we can receive anew the grace of Jesus Christ. Grace upon grace overflowing from our lives and into the lives of others. Let us pray. God of mercy and love, I pray that you will fill this place, that you'll fill the hearts of every single person here with your Holy Spirit. Fill us so that we might go into the world once more overflowing with grace. So that we might go into the world spilling over with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. May we always keep our focus on you. And may our lives speak to the person you have created us to be in Jesus Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you all to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion to join us in the words that we speak together each month. Words that maybe many of you have memorized, but every time we say them, they remind us that this is a holy moment a sacred interaction between us and our creator. And through communion, God offers to us each time the grace of Jesus Christ, an opportunity to start again, to reset our purpose and our values, and to focus again on the face of Christ before us. So this morning, as we share together in our communion liturgy, I invite you to listen closely and to hear God's voice speaking to you. Will you join me in our words as they're printed on the screen? Brothers and sisters, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. <coughs> heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. 
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, his baptism, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, the the church was birthed. We were delivered from sin and death, and with us, God made a new covenant through water and the Spirit. And for all these things, with all the people of earth and all the company of heaven, we praise God's name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As United Methodists, when we share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we believe that this table, that this gift from Christ is open to everyone. You do not have to be a member of this church or any church, but simply come with a heart willing to accept this gift of grace. So in just a moment, I'm going to invite our communion stewards forward, and Pastor Ruth and I will serve them first, and then we will offer two stations here at each of the front corners, and you'll be invited to come forward and to receive this gift of grace. As you come, may you open your heart once more. May you clear away the distractions those things that keep the fruit of the Spirit from growing in your own heart. And may you receive what the Holy Spirit has to offer today. I'll invite our communion stewards forward at this time.
with some rejoicing. <laughs> At this time, we pause in this moment to consider the gifts, the graces, the blessings that Christ has poured out on us. And we recall that God has called us to offer back all that we are for the building of the kingdom that is present here and now. 
I invite us at this time, we will stand and sing together the words of our doxology and to pray that the gifts we bring will be blessed and will be used for Christ's work today. Will you please stand and join me in singing hymn number 95, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. As we enter into a time of prayer, may we come with open hearts. May we come ready and expecting God to speak. Will you join me in an attitude of prayer? Holy and eternal God, we come into your presence today with praise and thanksgiving for your faithful love to us. We thank you for your goodness, for your generosity toward us. Oh God, your, your love never fails, not even when we turn away. You draw us nearer. You give us hope. And because of your grace and your mercy, oh God, our lives have been transformed. But sometimes the journey is too much. We feel like we can't go on or we complain the whole way. When our strength is gone, when we are ready to give up, it is in those times that you call our name. You convince us that there is hope. But when we falter and fail, forgive us. Forgive us, Father, and send your spirit into our hearts to remind us of your sustaining grace. And now, Father, we acknowledge that as you welcome us, so you welcome our prayers too. We bring them to you with confidence, knowing that you hear our voices. We lift up Lori Dunn's brother, Matt, as he continues to be in critical condition. Father, we pray that you will give him strength, that you will lift up those who are caring for him, those who are standing by his side, Lord, for the teams that are continuing to search for answers, for treatments, give them wisdom. For Matt's family, give them comfort, give them hope each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we lift up Molly, Clint, and Jude, especially with the news this past week that there are no more treatment options available and Molly will move into hospice care. Father, we pray that you will surround her, that you will surround all those who love her with your arms of care and comfort. Give them strength in the midst of this news. And most of all, Lord, fill Molly with your spirit and Jude and Clint as they prepare themselves for what the days ahead hold. Keep them close. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift up the family and friends of Joan Kempton as Joan passed away on Tuesday 
after a long and difficult battle with MS. While we know that she is in your care now, Lord, we recognize that so many hearts ache with grief. May you fill those close to Joan with your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also lift up Jean and Laura Smith, Nancy Fleming, Gary Clausen, Carol Lobenhofer. We lift up all those whom we hold close in our hearts. Lord, you know the cries of our hearts. We pray that you will hold these whom we hold dear, hold them close, give them hope and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you, God. Thank you for always hearing our prayers. And now we ask, Lord, that you will fill us with the fruit of the Spirit. Fill us so that our lives may become so saturated with Christ that people no longer see us, but they see Jesus in us. You call us to walk in patience, peace, and kindness and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, joy, and love. And we pray, may it be so. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, as children of God, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, may we stand and sing together our closing hymn, number 451, Be Thou My Vision. began a good work in you, continue to be at work in your life. May you have a life centered in the Holy Spirit, a life that bears rich fruit. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.